Lord uh, never ceases to keep pushing your preacher. And so y'all get the benefit of that. Uh, he's pushing me, so I gotta push y'all, all right? Um, we're gonna we're gonna continue with Luke's gospel. Luke chapter 6, verses 35 and 36. This kind of sums up a part of Jesus' sermon on the plain, just part of it. So we're going to read Luke 6, 35 and 36. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great. And you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For He is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray with me please. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and meditations in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. And may it bring you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray. Amen. There is a iPhone app that you can get that, that are games. Have y'all, some of y'all got, you know, iPhones or one of these, you know, gadgety phones or whatever. And you can play Angry Birds or, or some other kind of game. I don't know, you know, the kids have got all kinds of, you know, gun games and all this kind of stuff on there. There's actually one called Banana Gun. And I was looking at it the other day, and it's uh, it's these bananas that are, are living in, you know, a great place, and they're friends with the monkeys, until the monkeys figure out, oh, the bananas taste pretty good. So the monkeys start coming trying to, you know, get the bananas to eat, and the bananas start fighting back, and they get the all kinds of assault weapons and all this kind of thing to shoot the monkeys with. And uh, kind of, kind of not so, not so unlike. Well, like us, we can be that way. Uh, we're going to get them by George before they get us, right? <laughs> and, and it made me think of uh, bananas, resentful, uh, explosive, hateful, vindictive. Can we be that way? Not us. We're good Christian folks. We come to church on Sunday morning, right? Oh, well. Hmm. Maybe we can be. Maybe, maybe Jesus is talking to us. You think? Well, it's possible. It's certainly possible. Uh, and, and you know what? If we're not careful, even, even as, as the faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can have this stuff written all over us. Vindictive, resentful, explosive, hateful. We can be people that don't take no junk off of anybody by George. Just try it, and you'll see. I'll give you just double what you give me. Huh? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. But look at what Jesus is saying here on this sermon. Love your enemies? Now, this. What? Really? Now, if you look at the Greek word here, it's even that, that word for love, agape. He uses agape, which, which means to love somebody based on sincere appreciation and high regard. I mean, you really respect and, and honor them and, and treat them better than you, you expect to be treated. Oh, gosh. Does he really want me to do that? It, it, this, these two... Uh, verses that I read, 35 and 36, kind of sum up 
a few of the verses before, except for one thing, which I think is probably the most loving thing we can ever do for anybody, is pray for them. Sincerely lift them up before the Lord of hosts who can really do something with them, which we can't do. And you know, sometimes that can be the hardest doggone thing to do. Amen? Amen. To pray for somebody, to, to pray for somebody that has done us wrong. That, that doesn't care whether we live or die. That just assume we were dead. To pray for that person. That can be difficult. I was in a Sears row book here, I don't know, it's been some, some years ago, and we were making a purchase, uh, some kind of appliance or whatever, so we were there for a little while talking with the manager and what have you, and during the course of that conversation, he keeps kind of mentioning his ex-wife in this, you know, in bad way, <laughs> not, not affirming her, but kind of degrading her. So finally, I, I mean, I wasn't a preacher at that point in time, but I mean, I, it was obvious the old boy was mad with his ex-wife. So I kind of, I was like, oh, so, so what your ex-wife do to you? Oh, no, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, he starts just vomiting all this stuff out right there at the counter, you know, at his Sears and Robux store. And uh, I finally said, well, when did that happen? He said, oh, it's been five years ago. <laughs> and I thought, huh, what? <laughs> and, and I, you know, I, I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a little leap here. I said, you need to pray for your ex-wife, buddy. I mean, and he said, oh, no. Oh, no, I can't do that. I could never do that. And I said, well, you know what? If you can't pray for her, then you need to pray for the Lord to change your heart so that you can pray for her. Because said, it ain't hurting her a dadgum bit. You're being mad with her. It's hurting you. And I can see it written, written all over you. Your hatred, your unforgiveness, your vindictiveness, your whatever. You know what? When we when we actually pray for for an enemy, it, it over time it changes our posture from from this to this. Maybe not the first time. Maybe not the hundred and eleventh time. Maybe, maybe the thousand seven hundred and sixty-third time. But but as as we lift these people up before the Lord, God gets involved in it, okay? And we open ourselves up to God's work in us so that the prayer is genuine. Maybe it doesn't start out that way. I know. Maybe you're praying with gritted teeth. For a little while. I know. Yeah. I know. But we're to, we're, we're, we're to pray for them. We're to love them with agape love. All right, all right. Oh, no. Not really this. Do good to them? Really? Treat them, you know, do something nice for them. Wait a minute, it's one thing to love them and pray for them. I mean, that's kind of a personal thing. But you know, I've really got to do something nice for them? Really? Quit it. Y'all ever heard of Corey Tinboom? She was uh, a Christian in a, in a, in a little family there. In, I forget if it was the Netherlands or Belgium or one of the two during the 
during the onset of World War II, the Nazis had invaded and the, the Jews were fleeing for their lives. And, and she and her family put Jews up in the attic. They were a Christian family that, that hid the Jews. And they got caught. And her whole family was incarcerated in concentration camps in Nazi Germany. Most of them died. She survived. And she went on to, to, to go and do talks in front of groups after the war about God's activity and, and what God had done. And, and after one of her speeches, uh, a man came up to her with, with, with two hands that were bandaged and, and, and thanked her for her talk. And she asked, she said, well, what happened to your hands? And he said, oh, well, I, I burned them trying to put out my neighbor's roof that was on fire. Which was an horrible thing. After he walked away, one of his friends came up and said, that's only part of the story. The whole story is that his neighbor hated this man so bad that he, the neighbor set fire to his roof to burn him and his wife and his children alive in their house. And as this man and his son were putting out the fire on their roof, some of the embers flew over on the neighbor's house and caught it on fire. And that's when this man went over and, and burned his own hands trying to put the neighbor's house out. Do good to them, even though you're, they're your enemies. <laughs> oh my. He, he just won't let go of us here. He's got us down and he's going to prove a point here. Lend to them and don't expect to be repaid. Now, wait a minute. If you read the definition of what lending is, lending is, is a transfer of goods where, where you let somebody have some goods with the understanding that they pay you back with interest, right? That's what... Well, Jesus is saying, transfer the goods to them, but don't expect to be repaid. Now, where I come from, that's giving it to them. <laughs> I don't know how, I just, you know, you, say, you just give it to them. Just give it to them and forget about it. There was a young boy that was eight years old, was being bullied at school. <laughs> by the kid that sat right behind him. The kid kept punching him in the back. And the kid came home, and he, he lived in a, a Christian home and had an older brother. And they were sitting around the table, and, and, and he confessed this one night. He said, I'm being bullied at school. I don't know what to do. And, and, and the dad said, love your enemies. Do good to them. And he's like, I don't, I don't know. How, how am I supposed to be good to him? He's so mean to me. And they prayed about it and thought about it. And they said, well, what does he like? And the little boy said, well, he likes jelly beans. <laughs> so the mom said, we're going to, you take this little bag of jelly beans. And tomorrow when that kid punches you in the back, you turn around and give him that bag of jelly beans. And sure enough, on over in second period, <coughs> The kid punched him in the back and he reached under his desk and grabbed that, that bag of jelly beans and turned around and put it on the other kid's desk. The kid was nice to him all day after that. They became good friends. And the two little boys from the Christian home in time would become missionaries. And that little lesson they learned, they would apply on the mission field. And when they were taking the gospel to, to a new place, and they ran into enemies that were opposed to it, he, they would invite them into their home, and they would spread a meal out before them, and they would give gifts to them. And it, and it disarmed them. 
And those very ones that stood against them came to know Christ. And the gospel spread where they took it. Jesus tells us, be compassionate as your Father is compassionate. You know what we're looking at here is a picture of God Himself. We're looking at, at, at who God is and His character and what He sees in each of us, right? You see, the brokenness and the sin and the self-centeredness of this world has clouded our perception of the goodness of God at work in this world. This is all we see. This is all we want to see. But you know what? We want God to see the goodness in us. Do we not? We don't want God to see that junk on the outside. We want Him to look through all that and see what's really in our heart. Think about it like this. Who do you think the first Christians were? The first Christians were the ones who crucified Jesus Christ and nailed him to a tree. Peter stood up at Pentecost and said, You're the ones who killed the Lord and Savior, the Messiah of God. And they were cut to the heart. What should we do? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Accept the Lord because He sees the good in you even though you're rotten to the core. God is wanting you and I to see the potential goodness in the heart of those that hate us. Those who do us wrong, those who are self-centered and want to grind us in the dirt. Jesus says, you're to see the good in them. Just the way I saw the good in you. You don't mind that, do you? You know something, if, if, if somehow we could fast forward to where Jesus Christ comes in glory and he breaks through the clouds with a shout and the, the trumpet of the archangel and we see him, I guarantee you we'd say, who cares about all this earthly junk anyway? It's all trash. Set fire to it. Give it away. It's worthless to me. I want this one. This is my treasure. This is my hope. This is my joy. It's all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. So take that junk if you can use it. So, I know you got people who treat you bad. I know you do. I do. I know people that have just, that hate my guts. I can give you their name and address. <laughs> They're not on my speed dial. <laughs> But I hope and pray that I've forgiven them. And I hope, well, I hope that I would do good to them if I got the opportunity. That's what God wants. 
He wants us to quit looking at that junk on the outside and see what he sees. It was worth him sending his son into this world to pay the price, not just for us, but for them too. Yeah, they may be running headlong into sin right now. They may have, through coming to God, may be the last thought in their mind. Hey, weren't we that way one time before too? <coughs> well, that was different. That was me. No. <laughs> God wants them too. We've got to change our heart. We've got to make sure our heart is right with the living God. So let's not look at others on the outside, what we can see. But let us see them as God's marvelous work that can do great things to bring God glory. Even our enemies. And we might pray for them. Can we do that with God's help? Amen. Amen. If you're here today and you've never allowed Christ to, to be Lord of your life, you can invite Him in today and you can begin this marvelous faith journey that ends at the very throne of God with paradise for all eternity. Yes, sometimes it's hard work. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's not easy. It would be much easier to just forget about it, but the, the reward is far, far, far immeasurably greater because we gain Christ. He is our treasure. He is the goodness that we seek. Amen? Amen. All right.